Once we decided what type of heat pump we were going to have installed, we just needed to figure out how we were going to pay for it, what rebates we might be able to get, and how to go about choosing a contractor to do the installation. Hopefully we'll provide you with some good information in case you're thinking about having a heat pump of your own installed. Stick with us. Welcome to the Handyverse where we approach home ownership mindfully and turning to DIY is a first resort when our knowledge and skills allow it. Uh, for this ducted heat pump install, uh, that's something that our knowledge and skills don't allow us to do. So we're going to go through with you today some of the things that we had to do to go about having this installed. Uh, mainly the logistics around it. So financing, uh, what rebates we were able to secure, and then, uh, and then finally uh, picking a contractor to do the installation. Um, because we're doing a ducted heat pump, it's, it's more expensive than a ductless one. And so one of the things we had to look at was to how to finance the project. Usually we like to save money up in advance before we, we do some kind of project and pay for it with cash. But in this instance, it costs a lot more. So we're going to go the finance route here. So we're going to show you first what options we looked at and then uh, what we finally decided on and how we think we got the best deal for us. Perhaps somewhat obviously, if you're having a heat pump installed, you're going to have to pay for it somehow. So let's talk about what options there are. First one, cash. Cash is king, right? If you can save up the money in advance, it, it, there's a lot of benefits to that. Uh, for one, you might be able to push for a better price with whoever you're using. There's a benefit to the contractor to be able to pay up front like that. They don't have to pay any credit card fees or any financing fees. So it's a benefit to them, meaning that you might be able to get a better price as well. And then you don't have to worry about that then moving forward, incurring any kind of monthly expense. So if you could do cash, great. A little bit harder to do with a ducted system, because they are more expensive, but if you're going the ductless route, we highly recommend um, going with uh, cash if you can do it. Next one, credit card. We really don't recommend this route uh, unless you have some type of backup system uh, to, to pay it off immediately so you don't incur any interest because putting it on a credit card is gonna be a, the probably the highest interest rate option for you. So unless you can take advantage of some type of promotional deal, um, we don't recommend credit cards, but uh, you should know that that is an option for you if, if you need to go that route. Financing. If you are buying your heat pump through a larger organization, they probably have their own financing system that you can utilize. Uh, if not, you may be able to get a bank loan, which is a, the similar thing, but uh, either one, whether you go to the bank or whether you go through the company you purchased from, compare the interest rates to make sure that you're getting the best deal that you can. And make sure that you also know what the final price is that you're paying for your heat pump. Don't get swayed by the monthly payments. If you have a low monthly payment for 20 years, that might not be such a great deal. So know what the final total that you're going to be paying, including interest, and make sure that you take that into account. You may also be able to secure a credit line for this. Similar to financing, except you have more control over it. So credit lines just get attached to your bank account, allows you to overdraft. And then on a monthly basis, you only have to pay the interest that is incurred on that amount. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of paying it back. And uh, that's, a, that's a good route to go, especially if you can get a low interest rate. You may also be able to get a line of credit that's a, a home equity line of credit. So that's attached to your, to your house, to your mortgage, which allows you to, it gives you more um, leverage when looking for your interest rate. The only thing is with the home equity line of credit, if you don't have one set up already, there may be legal fees associated with it to get it set up. And you, gotta, you should also know that using a home equity line of credit, it leverages your house. So um, if you can't pay it back, uh, it could put you at risk in other areas. So what did we end up doing? Well, since we bought our heat pump and uh, sourced our contractor through Home Depot, we actually took advantage of their financing options, uh, which is basically just their credit card. And I know I said credit card's bad, but the promotion at the time when we bought ours was 24 months interest free. So what we did was we secured our credit card from Home Depot. We used that to pay for the installation and pay the contractor. And now we have a grace period of 24 months interest free where we can uh, pay over time and lower that uh, total amount. And then we have also a credit line secured for it for the end of that 20, uh, 24 month period. If we have a balance remaining, we're going to then transfer that to the credit line so we don't incur any interest on the Home Depot credit card. 
So that is a situation where using a credit card can be to your advantage. Look for those promotional offers, look for low interest rates or no interest rates, but make sure you have a backup plan, whether that's cash, credit line, loan, something, something to back that up so you don't get caught. Where we live, you can pay $100 to have a home energy assessment done to your house. Uh, we would recommend this because what it allows you to do is it gives you a, a rating for your home and then uh, if you do improvements, improve the insulation, improve the heating, windows, etc., it, it uh, makes you eligible to get some rebates. So look for those similar programs in your area and, and schedule your home energy assessment before you do any work. Uh, this, this will allow you to get those rebates. How they perform that assessment is that they will review what you have in your house, your insulation levels, what type of heating you have, uh, they'll review your windows, uh, they'll check to see if it's sealed around those windows, they'll check your attic, what type of insulation is up there. Um, but then they'll install a fan in the doorway and they, what they do is they change the pressure in your house and they can, by measuring that, they, they can tell how efficient your home is at, at keeping the heat in or heat out, depending on where you are. And as you can see here in ours, our house performed pretty poorly. A typical new home looks like it's about 100 gigajoules per year in home energy costs, where our house was over double that at 211 gigajoules per year. So that's that's costing us money on a monthly basis. And uh, so we're gonna draw, use this to drive, uh, drive some improvements, starting with the heat pump. But then with that assessment, they also provide you with a lot of other information on what other rebates you might be eligible for. If you are installing a ductless heat pump, or uh, a mini split as sometimes they're called, make sure you check that the, the, the heat pump you're putting in qualifies for the rebate. There's only selected manufacturers that are on the rebate list, so check that before so you don't get caught at the end. The rebates available in the time of this video are $300 per ton for ductless heat pumps and $500 per ton for ducted systems. And here you can see from the energy assessment that if we incorporate all of the suggestions that they've given us, we could lower our household energy usage down to 123 gigajoules per year, which is a significant improvement over the 211 that we start with. So what other items were highlighted for us? Really the biggest one was the insulation in the basement that uh, I really need to get done. We started the laundry room already, as you've seen in some of our other videos, but I have to get the rest of the basement done to really capitalize on improving our house. We were also considering getting our windows done and uh, it, the timing of it worked out well with this audit as well, so there's some rebates available there. And then there's some other, other smaller ones that are available as well, such as if we improve our attic ceiling, do general air leakage uh, ceiling around the house. So really we just want to drive home the point again of check what rebates are available in your area. There's government programs that, are, that look to help people out improve their house and it reduce overall energy uses usage so check it out it could be uh, bonus money for you so far we have an idea of roughly how much it's going to cost how we're going to pay for it and what rebates we might be able to get now we just have to find somebody who can actually do the installation for us we would recommend going out to at least five different uh, contractors for a quote when you're looking at getting a heat pump installed uh, as Suzanne mentioned before we, we did five when we first got the house. We went reached out to five different companies to have quotes done. So we had some background information already. Uh, we didn't do a heat pump then, we're doing it now. And, uh, and so we only reached out to three this time. Uh, our top one from the first round and then two more additional ones that we hadn't dealt with yet to, to uh, just get new quotes and make sure that we're in the right ballpark for what we want to do. When you are talking to contractors, you should already have a base understanding of what you're looking for, which you should if you're looking at videos like this. So make sure you know that and, and, and the contractors should have good information that supports what you already know, but don't let them lead you into something that is not what you want. So you should have a good idea of what you want before you talk to them and they should support that for you. If they're not, don't worry about it. Get rid of them, go to somebody else. Uh, you'll also hear a lot about it's not all about cost, you know, you pay for quality, you get what you pay for. That is true to an extent, but don't let that spin you into paying more than you should just because somebody says that. So you want to really look at it, compare the different quotes from different people, use your judgment on what their knowledge is, and, and do they support what you already know 
Another thing to consider with contractors is that most of them only deal with one or two specific brands, which if you have your heart set on a specific brand, that may limit the contractors available to you. So uh, keep that in mind when you're looking for a contractor. On the flip side of that, all else being equal, if you're trying to decide between two different con contractors and you're not sure, then the brand is then something that you can use to g give you that final differentiator between the two to make your decision. So what do we do in terms of a contractor? Well, like I said, we get three different quotes. Uh, one of the people that quote it, they never even came to the house to assess. They provided it via email. Uh, that would made it easy. We didn't go with them. Uh, the next quote was actually the lowest price, the lowest cost. Uh, but we were comfortable with how they handled it. It, it. We had to follow up with them multiple times to get the quote. And I get it, they may have been busy, but every, all of them were busy. Um, and then we also didn't really like the way that they assessed the work that needed to be done. We, we felt that they didn't really go into enough detail in what work needed to be done to get the heat pump installed. So we ended up going with the third option, which uh, we found them to be very responsive. They came the same day that evening when we called looking for a quote. Uh, they went through everything very thoroughly with us, what work needed to be done in terms of like upgrading the electrical panel and what other requirements in the house might be needed to bring it up to code. And then uh, and the price was right as well and it had a decent brand. So that's what we did. We went with who we were most comfortable with in that, in that situation. Like I said, not the lowest price, but still we we're happy with the job and, uh, and it, it ended up being the right decision. So that's what we would recommend for you as well. And that's it for the end of our second video uh, in this series on heat pumps. The next video we'll, in this series we'll talk about what they did for the installation, what was required, what to bring up to speed, and we'll give you our thoughts on the heat pump itself and how it's doing in our house as a ducted system and whether we like it or not. Anyway, check it out. If you like this, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.